Well, you're, it's summertime, it's hot, and it's time that the garden needs watering here in the upper Midwest and parts of the country. We had a tremendous amount of rain early on in the season where we did not have to focus on hydration of soil for our plants. But now that the season is heating up and we're getting closer to the middle portions of summer, the requirements of water is much greater for our plants. So we're going to talk about some ways in which you can water your garden. Now, many people may think that you just water the garden. You put some water on, you walk away, and you come back tomorrow, and you do it again. Well, there is some techniques and some tools in which you can use to better utilize the water in which you're applying to the garden. And when soil is dry, you, is very, um, you, you may not be aware of how much water it takes to hydrate that, water, that soil back to a state where it will obtain moisture, whether from sky or, f- or from you. Uh, when soil is extremely dry, it's like a dry sponge in your kitchen. It takes a while for it to, the, the cohesion to start uh, uh, in the soil to begin to pick up that moisture and hold the moisture. So it does take some time. It almost becomes uh, repellent of water rather than absorbent to the water. Right. So you want to make sure you're watering at the right time of the day. So for this, there's... there's well, it, it, right time of the day. That's a very broad term because it's based on the individual's uh, availability. Right. So what I'm saying, though, is that you don't want to water, if you can, you want to avoid watering in the middle of the day. So between, like, I don't know, 11 a.m. and 4 p.m., you want to make sure that you're not trying to water during that time. If you water during that time, and that's the only time you have to water... You can, and it's not going to hurt anything, but we advise either early in the morning, once the plants come out of the nighttime and they're not stressed from the heat, or in the evening as the temperatures cool down and the plants go into that uh, nighttime temperature where the sun is not there anymore, and you water, the plants can uptake that that, that water in which you're putting in the ground, and they do quite a bit of growing at night, and they can absorb that water. It doesn't evaporate as quickly, and the plants can utilize it more than it would during the peak of the day because that plant is not under a stress condition or not even necessarily a stress condition during the noon hours or the heat of the day. It's more in a protective state of wilting of leaves or reduction of surface area that the sun is not able to hit to prevent or reduce the amount of evaporation coming off that plant. Right. So since we're talking about timing, like watering the right time of the day, I want to talk about getting on a water schedule. And this doesn't mean like you necessarily have to time, make a timer or anything like that. What you need to do is you want to be conscious of your watering schedule. So maybe you decide that based on your own personal schedule, you can, you're going to make sure you're watering consistently Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Um, maybe it rained really well on Wednesday. So then you skip that day, but then you water again on Saturday, or you check to make sure that your soil may or may not need water. But in the in your mind, you get into the schedule, you get into a routine, you get into a habit, and watering becomes consistent for you. Checking to see if you need to water is simply as easy as taking your finger or a garden trowel, just scraping the top two uh, inches or so of soil and seeing if there's moisture there. Now, based on the the plant in which you're watering you want to make sure that you get close to the root zone if your if your tomatoes are planted three or four inches deep you want to kind of get away from the root zone uh, back off the plant and dig a little hole and go about three inches deep and if there is a moisture level there then you don't need to water as intensely or at all but if it is dry and powder and then you need to water and you need to water two to three times more than what you think you do because that takes time in order for the soil to change to a uh, absorbent matter rather than a repellent matter because the soil is so dry and powdery or or not have any moisture in it at all and watering can reduce a lot of conditions in which your plants can face blossom uh, uh, blossom and root rot is one for tomatoes that many people are seeing across the country on a lot of the garden groups that we follow it is because that the soil is too dry to pick up the blo- uh, the calcium that is needed to develop the fruit correctly blossom and in, in, blossom and in root rot is the blackening or the discoloration of the bottom of the fruit through the developmental stage and into ripeness it's all the way through the, the uh, fruit itself. It's black all the way up into the internal portions. By watering, 
and keeping the soil moist. It allows the available calcium, which we have many of our gardens have plenty of calcium available, but it allows the soil, uh, the, the plant to pick up that calcium that is available in the soil through the moisture that you are putting in the garden. If it is too dry, the calcium is locked in the soil and prevents the plant from picking up the necessary uh, nutrients, which is the calcium, in order to develop the fruit, and then you got rotten fruit. If you keep it watered, the plant will fix itself the next generation of fruit here coming up. Right. So with that being said, you also can consider irrigation. Irrigation will also help you stay in a watering schedule, water at the right time, water consistently. It'll bring the water straight to the root of the plant. So you technically are using less water. And that way it allows for you to have more freedom, not necessarily have a sprinkler or something going and watering everything. Um, We're talking about a drip irrigation system. Like a drip irrigation, okay. yeah. Drip irrigation. But there's is, also sprinkler irrigation. There, there, right. We'll cover all of these here. Drip irrigation is pipes, small pipes that will run on the ground that has different, uh, that has emitters at increments of 12 or 18 inches. And some you can actually customize, but you will drip like a half gallon an hour. And it puts it right to the root zone so you, the water is getting there. There are soaker hoses, which is an actual hose that. Uh, oozes out the water all across the hose itself and um, waters the plants or the bed in which you're in. You can also do the above ground sprinkler system and that would be more recommended in early morning than late evening uh, as we get later into the year. If it was early in the season, the water setting on the, the leaves would not be an issue of the potential of mildew developing, but later on in the year here, as the nighttime temperatures get cooler, the water can stay on the leaves and develop some mildew issues. People who say don't water during the peak of the day or don't ever water above ground because the water will get on the plants and cause um, the issues. Well, when it rains, right? You can't you can't stop that. You the the problem that occurs when people are saying that or, or YouTubers uh, predominantly say don't water above ground and the plant will get diseases. It's because the water is splashing. On the soil, and the soil is splashing on the plants, and 90% of the problems your plants are going to face is from soil splashing up on them. So we'll talk about the reduction of splash up here in a moment, and of which we can do to increase the health and longevity and the production of our plants. But anything that we can do in order to get water on the plants or on in the soil, we need to do. And watering during the peak of the day, putting water droplets on the leaves does not intensify the sun through the leaves and burn or through the water droplets and burn the leaves. No, that's a myth. And that's a myth. Right. It's because when it rains during the day at three o'clock in the afternoon and it clears out and the sun's intense for another four hours, what's happening? Sun is going through those water droplets and the plants don't combust. If you're having spots on your leaves, it's from other situations, problems, chemicals, what have you. So what are other ways in which we can uh, water our garden and make it efficient? The best thing is to use mulch, and you can use mulch for many reasons, but one is that it helps bring, it helps hold in moisture into the soil, and also it helps prevent the soil from splashing up onto the leaves of the plants. Um, so that's why you want to use mulch. And you can use different many different things for mulch. You can use anything from leaves you can collect your leaves in the fall you can use we've used shredded paper it's not necessarily if people have we've we've got mixed comments on social media ah, that's, mm-hmm. i love that mulch or that mulch is not very pretty right so the, it yeah. doesn't have to be pretty and necessarily it has to be a, effective uh but yeah and chemical free seed free grass clippings uh and, and in addition to holding the moisture in and preventing splash up and it, when we talk about it, 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 it reduces the amount of weeds that grow too. Right. So when we talk about reducing or using weed-free grass clippings, or seed, yeah, yeah. Uh, chemical-free and weed-free grass clippings. We're talking about the chemicals in regards to if you pay somebody or you yourself spray your lawn with something to enhance its growth, remove weeds, whatever, a broadleaf spray, and then you put those, and then you let those, you cut your grass, you let those grass clippings dry out you put them on your your garden your edible garden it's going uh, 2,4-D is what's in those broadleaf sprays and that's going to cause problems in your soil so if you do spray your lawn or somebody else sprays your lawn you don't want to use those grass clippings you bring them in the garden you use them as mulch it rains you water that persistent chemical will release from the clippings and go into the soil and kill your broadleaf toma- plants, your tomatoes, your beans, your eggplants, all of that. And even in a compostable black soil, we've let it sit for two years and put it in the garden, it's still very active and still will cause detriment to your vegetation in your edible garden. Finally, let's talk about water collection 
in which we have. Uh, briefly before that, when we do the irrigation system, whether it's on a sprinkler, drip irrigation, soaker hose, there is manual timers in which you can click a, a little timer and it'll tick back to like 120 minutes and it'll shut off by itself. Mm -hmm. You can go to the more, you can go to a higher level of timer and it can actually hook up to your Wi-Fi system. You hook it up to an app, and just like program. everything, yeah. all the technology yeah. we have, there's technology and, and the, for your water. And the app will also shut it off if it's raining, so it's not watering while it's raining or has rained that day. So, so if you're if you are technolo technologically yeah. advanced. You can, let you can be in Connecticut and yeah. go, okay, I need to water my garden in, in Seattle. Okay, let's turn it on. That you type can of let thing. the technology yeah. work for yeah. you. Uh, finally, water collection. Rain barrels uh, is the most notable of these types of me means of collection water. Uh, but also, uh, as sad as it is, you need to check with your city or municipality or homeowners association because there are certain laws and restrictions in cities that either restrict or prohibit the use or collection of rainwater on your own property. And that is that is sad, but I guess it is kind of what it is. And so that's something you want to keep in mind is that you need to know that that's something you can do before you invest in some maybe a rain barrel. Rain barrels are not too expensive, but before you get it all set up and then all of a sudden you have to take it down you yeah. can get creative there's different other ways you can hide it hide it yes. and it might look like a, a hose uh, something that you're storing your hose in yep so yeah there's definitely ways around it so those are some of the ways in which we can water our garden and keep our plants producing all season long for more information please visit the wisconsin vegetable